everyone. I bet a lot of you have got these moulds. These were not expensive by any means and they were just from Amazon. I'll put you the link below in the video description in case you haven't got them already, just to make your life easier. Now, what I wanted to do was something a little bit subtle and beautiful with these and uh, just, just a little bit lovely, you know. So we're going to use epoxy resin to do them. So we'll get our epoxy on the go shortly. But first of all, I want to look at these colours in a bit more detail. We are going to be using this one. That's that denim blue. We are going to be using this. This is the one I said was called Amethyst. There it is. Lovely, isn't it? It's a subtle purple. It's not an in-your-face purple. We've got white shim supreme white. This probably needs stirring. I haven't used it for a while, but that's a pigment paste. So as you can see, it's an old pot. It can half go a long way. This does. I've had these for a long, long time. And then we've got white shimmer, which is another pigment paste. Those are all from just for you online. Right, let's get some epoxy mixed up. Now, what I'm going to do is get a a first coat in, and some of the noughts and crosses themselves that. You know, it will form that frame. Just the thing here, I'll refer to it as noughts and crosses because that's what we call it in, in the UK. But I know in other countries it's often called tic-tac-toe, but that's obviously what this game is. So the resin I'm using is Apex High Gloss. It's kind of my go-to resin. I think of it as if you're only going to get one resin, it's the one to get because you can do shallow pores with it. You can top coat and dome things with it and you can go up to a reasonable depth. I've gone up to a couple of inches, although that was really pushing my luck, to be fair. That was a bit much. But, you know, for most of your normal makes, uh, frog skulls, things like that, what else do we make? Trays, bowls, pots, all that sort of stuff. Yes, you can use it for all of those. It degasses really well. Cures in, uh, oh, to be honest, in a cold room, I've had it take as long as 20 hours. But usually in a warmer room, uh, which my craft room is generally quite warm, it will cure in something. I can demold in about 10 hours usually. So it's a, it's a nice straightforward resin. Obviously, if you're doing a really deep pour, get some deep cast. Apex do a wonderful deep cast as well. That's really good stuff. And that one coat is that I mentioned earlier, that is for shallow pores, fast curing, that sort of thing. It's pretty awesome to say the least. But yeah, this is for everything in between, really. <laughs> and as I said, you can use it for your shallow pores as well. Right, that's mixed up pretty well. And I've stirred it far too fast, so I filled it with bubbles. You know what I'm like. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to put a bit of the colour in. Yeah, we're going to go, this is for the blue. So we're going in this lovely denim blue. And because I want this a fairly solid colour. The bottom, the base, uh, I'm going to do something more creative with. We're going to use, possibly, I might even put some of this in. This is called floating silver. Now, this is a pigment powder, so it goes a long way. It's very pigmented, look. As you can see, um, it doesn't take much to make it fairly trans uh, tra not translucent or transparent. Or sort of opaque, that's the word I'm looking for. Deary me. I worry about my brain sometimes. I had a scan once. I have got a brain, I was surprised. Anyway, I'm just going to drizzle this in. This is going to be the large one. I'm not too worried if I do end up with bits of it getting onto the centre, onto the middles, because I can just knock that back afterwards. I've got links for Amazon in the UK and America. I must start working on other countries, but that's as far as I've got, I'm afraid. So I have got those for you, and they will be down in the in the uh, description below. You know what, if I had a penny for everybody, every time somebody said, where do I get that from? After I've said, the link is in the description below. <laughs> I'd be a wealthy lady. I have a feeling it's because some of you are watching on your TVs and um, obviously it's not as easy as that on your TV. I will be able to put you a link on screen for... Um, just for you online though, which is where the resin and the colours have come from. Simply because I can I can do a QR code for that. 
Whereas I can't really do that for every single product from Amazon in, in two different countries and, you know, all that sort of thing. We'd end up with a screen full of QR codes and it'd be very, very confusing. But I'll certainly put the one for just for you online. And they do ship. That's where the, the resin and the pigment, the Apex resin and the these coloured pigments come from. And they most certainly do ship pretty much worldwide. Um, so, yeah, you should be able to get hold of it. Although, you know, whatever country you live in, shipping from another country is always a cost. You can only do so much about that, can't we? So just having a little bit of a clean up here and then I'll be leaving this to cure at least for a few hours it doesn't need to cure completely but uh, you know it needs to kind of solidify let's say there we are now what I'm going to do is get a little pointy stick which is a micro brush that I've pulled the fluff off the end and I'm going to go around the edges like this because this to me looks like one of those edges that if there's any bubbles going to get stuck, that is where they will stick. Now because of the type of background design I'm going to put on here, you probably won't notice too much anyway. But that's not the point. I would know that they are there. So I'm trying to do this without touching the base and scratching it. Going very gently. These little micro brushes, when you pull the fluffy end off, they're not that sharp anyway. They are kind of rounded, tipped. So although it's pointy, it's not sharp. Am I making any sort of sense here? Please let me know if I am. That would make a nice change. Now I've also got this on my levelling table because Clearly, um, this sort of thing does need to be level. <laughs> right, as you can see, I've got a bit left in my pot. And we do need to make five of each of these. So let's get in blue, noughts. Then we'll do white crosses. And I made up too much resin again. There we are. So I'm just going to chuck this remaining resin into something and uh, we'll move on to the next colour. Oh. <clears throat> I'm going to do purple for our next one and obviously I'm not going to mix up as much resin because it's smaller. Mixing up smaller quantities of resin has just got easier for me because the Apex resins come with pumps on top of the bottles nowadays. And that doesn't half make life easy. <laughs> the blue to one side for now. What I am going to do is just get my little torch. Now, I'm not using my big fierce torch for this because clearly I am going to be getting against the silicon and that is just asking for trouble. I use that when I'm working with deeper moulds or when I can just give it a quick zap in the centre and, you know, come away from the uh, the silicon because we don't want to go spoiling our moulds do we so here's our purple get my dinky little spoon little spoons by the way are cocktail stirrers i use a lot of cocktail stirrers um it's not that i particularly drink cocktails i drink a lot of things but not cocktails very often but uh yeah <laughs> now again i'm putting quite a lot of the pigment in the stir stick is a, a cocktail stirrer as well but quite, when I say quite a lot, that's not much really, is it? It doesn't need much. But I do want it to be reasonably opaque again, which as you can see, this is. And it's going that beautiful, deep, sort of petrol blue, denim blue, whatever you want to call it. So there we go. This is amethyst. It's pretty opaque. Gorgeous. Just making sure I've got right around the edges and I think we're there with the stirring on that one. Now this is going to go in the noughts again but first of all we're going to try and do that thing going around the edges with this smaller one. 
But as you've seen, if you go wrong and you end up with it on top of the squares, it doesn't matter. You can soon clean it up. And to a great extent, it will sort itself out and drop down into the recesses anyway. Right, let's say, look, I've got a few drips where I've gone over. So again, we're going to do the noughts in the darker colour. The crosses are going to be the pearly white. Oh, put too much in those. So just to get off the surplus there, all we're going to do is get my stirry stick and lift it away. I do want them domed. I don't want a sharp edge on the top. So I do want them domed. I just want to take off just a tiny bit. There we are. That should settle it back down. Yeah. Pretty much. Just a little bit more. There, let me let the surface tension take over. And this has already settled itself into where it's supposed to be. Isn't that great? So, nothing to do now for, what should we say, three or four hours? Just let it firm up. Oh, I made a mess now. Just let it firm up so that it's, uh, we can put the next layer in. And that's where we're going to get a bit artistic and do some swirliness and some beautifulness. Just wanted to get these initial layers in. So we've got our outlines all nice and neat. There we are. And of course, if this is solidified, we can give it all a wipe around as well. But not that you're really going to see anyway because of the pattern if a bit's gone stray. There we are. Right, see you in a few hours. Right, it's been about four hours and these are, well, they're still well and truly soft and tacky, but they're not wet, so the colours aren't going to merge. So I'm mixing up some more of the resin and we're going to separate it into a load of little shot glasses um, and little disposable shot glasses, which I will then wipe out so I can reuse. So just mixing up some more resin. Uh, I'm going to dispense it be, uh, between these. I'm going to need a bit of the purple and a bit of the blue and then a bit of each of the whites. Actually, we'll have some of the silver as well. So I've got plenty of pots on the go. So, just going to move these over a little bit so we can see what we're doing. And I'm going to keep some back to be clear as well. So, let's have a decent amount of the whites. And... And I'll keep some silk sim back in my pot as well. So I've got plenty of little pots made up here. I'm not whether I'm going to need them all, but we'll see. Now, the first thing I want to put in is I want to drizzle some of the floating silver over these because uh, I'm used to using it up the other way. Because it floats, it'll come up this way to the surface. I want it to go down because <laughs> obviously we're looking at the back here, aren't we? So I'm going to put quite a bit in. It might take over rather. It does tend to. Um, but the silver that this produces is just amazing. Look at that. Here's the blue again. I do love that blue. It's so sort of dark and sultry. It's lovely. And the purple. I 
As you can see, I'm still putting quite a bit of this colour in, despite the fact that it's so intense and you don't probably don't need that much. But I just know the white and the silver is a bit prone to taking over if you're not careful. So I need to try and balance off the amounts of each colour, really. We're going to have quite a bit of colour in these edges. I mean, because the colour of the moulds, it doesn't look very colourful at the moment, does it? It just looks kind of black. <laughs> Right, now these are pigment pastes, so extremely pigmented. Not going to need much. That should be more than enough, I would think. This pearly white is gorgeous. Most white pearlescent either powders or, pig or pastes that I've used don't stay as white as that. They usually end up a bit creamy. It actually looks a bit creamy in the pot, but when you, when you use it, it goes that beautiful proper proper white and the supreme white as you can see that's very white look how thick that is uh, not going to need much <laughs> it's not usually quite as thick as that when you first take the top off but as you can see tiny dot is going to go an awful long way that should make it pretty much opaque i would think right let's get our silver in May have mixed up way too much of this. I don't know. <laughs> because I just want to drizzle it over. Like that, really. So, yeah, probably have mixed up way too much. So, a lot. No, I'll, I'll keep that to one side just in case I need it. Now. In with the blue, which is this one. And I kind of want to go a bit like that. I'm wondering if I should have done more of the colour, actually. We'll see. And then we want our purple into this one. I might put a bit of the purple in the... Oh, I don't know. Probably got too much of the purple mixed up. See, that's a better ratio of the colour, actually. So, no, it isn't too much. Yeah, I think I'm going to be mixing a bit more blue. Luckily, I've got plenty of spare mixed up, so that's easy. Notice how easily this mixes in as well, this pigment powder. It's so fine that it mixes beautifully. You really don't need to worry about it kind of clumping. Might go again with that in a minute. <laughs> right, let's have some pearly white. Ah, now, the other thing I wanted to do with the pearly white was make up all of our crosses. So I might need a bit more of this mixed up as well, might I? Little tip for you, if you do this, just whatever you do the crosses in, just make it as your plain mix. Don't try and mix something up because you're going to have to do, you know, in terms of mixing up a, a funky colour or anything or doing a funky pattern. I mean, you can if you want, but you're going to make a rod for your own back because it's, uh, you, you know, you're going to have to keep replicating it because you're going to make five of each. So. <laughs> Can I suggest keep it simple with the knots and the crosses? There. Right. So I'm going to chuck this in the middle. There we are. And I'll put that pot on side because I'll use it again later. So next, um, I think I want to go in with a bit more colour again, actually. Before I go over with the white at the end. So what we should start to get is some sort of pushing and pulling, but it won't be at all even, because we did like a, a scattery, drizzling around sort of effect. 
with the first colours, the first batch of colour and the silver. So we should end up with something quite funky. I, well, I hope so. <laughs> she says, you know, do you ever get that feeling that I'm making this up as I go along? Because you know what? You're right. <laughs> I start with some sort of a plan and then it all kind of goes a bit screwy. So to clean my pots afterwards I should just go around them with my wonder wipes get the worst of it out if there's a bit left in there and it cures on them doesn't matter for the projects when it's not I'm not trying to look all posh because I'm on camera um I will reuse them okay let's put some lids on because I really don't want to knock these over Okay, so we're going to kind of go like this now. I don't quite know why, I just fancied going like that. And we're definitely going to need some more resin. Back in a moment. Right. Back with a bit more of the white. So we're going to scribble over it like this, like we're making some sort of mad scribbly mess. I've come over all Jackson Pollock. Um, I presume you all know who Jackson Pollock is. Was. Is. I presume he's. Is he still around? I don't know. I should know. And we're going to dump some in the middle, which I hope will fill it up. Might need to make a bit more for this one. The last dump into the centre. At least I hope it'll be the last. Now that has made just a splodgy mess. So what I'm going to do now is grab a dotting tool and do a bit of drawing around in it really. But I'm waiting for that one to get into that corner before I do anything. And this one, I'm just going to pull it in from the corners. Try not to touch the mould. And in from there too. And I don't know whether I've got enough colour in this one really. So I'm trying not to touch the mould so that I don't scratch it. So I'm just sitting across the surface. This one's bigger so I'm going to go in between these as well. And I don't know where that silver is going to end up. Um, you know, intentionally putting that on a bit random to start with. I'm hoping we'll do something a bit kind of weird and interesting. But it's gone very clear in the centre and really I'm hoping that that will pull and do something funky. don't know. I just hope some of the silver can still be seen from the other side rather than just end up with a really pretty back to it. But I'm hoping that that'll have given it some sort of interesting dimension and that it will still pull and push around a bit. I'm not sure it will, but we'll see. Right, stop messing now. <laughs> she says and carries on messing. I could have done it all with splat in the centre maybe, but I wanted it a little bit more random. Right, we'll see you later for the demold, and obviously I've got to make some more of these, but we can get on and demold these, can't we? And we'll see what they look like. See you later then. 
Damn old time, as you can see. I've left these a good long time, long enough to make some more of these. The maximum you're ever going to need is five. <clears throat> now, as you can see, these have come out, as you can see, they're very, very slightly translucent. The coloured ones vary. Um, I wasn't quite so consistent with putting my colour in, but they're very distinct from the white ones, so that is all you need. Lovely. Now, and our purple, it's that very subtle purple. Gorgeous, like the very subtle blue. I wanted subtle colours, didn't I? Now, let's do the little purple one first. I just hope you can see the pattern of a nice pattern through, because the backs look nice. Oh, that's pretty. <laughs> the silver's come through. You can't see so much of the white in that, though. But it's still giving us that nice, if, sort of randomy sort of effect that I was after. And there you go. You've got your noughts and your crosses to go in your spaces. It could be that I might... Perhaps I should have done that in a contrasting colour. I don't know. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think, Kermit? <laughs> Put him out of the way for a minute. Yeah, the back's rather nicer than the front, isn't it? That happened when I did that uh, bowl with this, these colours too. But hey, this isn't a piece where you've got a choice as to which is the back and which is the front, really. Oh, that one's come out nice. Oh, darn it, look, i got a white bit there. How the hell did I get a white bit there? Oh, I don't suppose it matters. And it's slightly translucent and you've got like a bit of an explosion of the colours going on. And our little pieces fit beautifully. i tell you what, for a cheap mould, that was great. Yes, because to block that, I've got to go there. But if I go there, I win. <laughs> so if I've made a mistake and gone there. <laughs> anyway, you see what I mean? The maximum you ever need to win is five. Probably four, actually. I don't know. Anyway, there you go. There's your pieces. So, shame about that little white splat. Otherwise, I think they're rather successful. Now, of course, you could do these bits in silver or gold or something. Or you could... Or any other colours. Whatever colours you like. The other thing you, do, you can do, you can lay... Uh, inlays into these so you've got little images in them you could use washi tape or stickers or all sorts of things so all in all this gives you a load of, of options I did one a little while ago and I it, this is before I was filming but I'll happily do another one if you want me to show you I did guinea pigs versus rabbits for one of these and I put grass and flowers and things in them do you want me to make a video on that um because it was a fun one you, let me know and uh, I'll happily do that for you because I, I did have fun doing that so if you like this one then folks, you know what to do. The buttons are all down here. I really appreciate the likes and of course the subscribes, um, which is free. If you'd like to hit the subscribe button and the notification so that it uh, will, YouTube will let you know when I'm doing anything else. And also I love to see your comments. So let me know what you think. And also quite importantly, let me know um, if you would like me to do the guinea pigs versus rabbits one. Um, hmm, hang on, it looks like I might be able to get that off. I still don't know how it happened though. Anyway, never mind, we'll come back to that. So I'll see you for the next video, everyone. Thank you so much for watching and uh, enjoy your craft. Bye then. Sitting here all alone. Time's creeping by. I'm so bored. Can't shake this feeling inside. I reach for pen and paper, a game to pass the time. Playing notes and crosses, drawing X's and O's, yeah. But wait a minute, something's ringing in my brain In some countries they call it tic-tac-toe Why change our life? Bow, bow, can't